but I had just graduated from the University of Pittsburgh in 1974, mm. and we would have study groups uh, uh, in the evening after I got on work. I was teaching at North Carolina Central University. Okay. So we had maybe about 12 young young brothers, people on the five, and then some community people come, and we talked and stuff. We didn't have black studies then. Mm. We didn't have a black bookstore, none of that. Mm. But from these discussions and things like we got, you know, we said, why don't we start a black bookstore? And somebody said, yeah, let's do that. We didn't, we just talked. So we thought that uh, to, to do that, then the rest of the community would be conscious like we were. Right. So one night I was in my kitchen sitting there drinking some vodka and orange juice. <laughs> I was about 32 years old. Mm. And I was home by myself. And I decided to write something about the role of white people in slavery. I, so I had read a book called The Black Jacobins. And in that, that book talks about how brutal slavery was in the South. I had read some books about slavery, but they were not brutal like that in the South. I mean, in Haiti. So, but anyway, I wrote this document outlining the brutality of slavery. And and then uh, it, it was two pages, front and back. And then the more I thought about it, I said, what am I going to call this thing? And the more I thought about it, I know one thing they did a lot of slavery was lynch people. Mm. So there's a town called Lynchburg, Virginia, right. about 60 miles from Durham. Right. And I thought about that. And I was wondering, I said, I bet you that's with, with Lynchburg, that's the name because there must have been a lot of black people there. Mm. So I said, hmm. And they have, we used to have a sort of like a name like you have now for black people. Mm -hmm. And if it was a male, it was Willie. You might have a name you call a male here, not some kind of name, but mm -hmm. it was Willie. Mm -hmm. So I said, Willie. Willie Lynch. Mm. Willie Lynch. And that's how the name Willie Lynch came to be. Wow. Then, uh, I uh, put that on the letter, Xerox on the old army uh, machine. Mm -hmm. And at 12 o'clock midnight, I put them in my car, I did it, I ran 500 copies. I just rode all over town, dropping them off, wash heads, places like that, mm -hmm. where people would pick them up, they wouldn't necessarily see who did it because it was at 12 o'clock at night. Right. So that's what I did. And I didn't tell anyone in my group because I wanted to see what was, I didn't know it was going to work. Mm. And uh, I sat back and I said, maybe about three days, stuff I start jumping off. Mm. Three days came, nothing. Three weeks came, nothing. Mm. So I thought, well, I forgot to move on to the next story. Mm. And, uh, uh, I did take one to a bookstore. He had one copy of it. I ain't, I have no copy. I don't know what the hell. I mean, it didn't, it didn't really mean anything to me, <laughs> you know. But in any event, uh, 15 years had passed, and I'm at the Million Man March. And lo and behold, Mr. Furgun, who I admired deeply, read that speech, and I almost fainted because I want to know how did he know about that letter right right and some people have speculated that what happened was as people traveled through there some people picked it up and it began to carry it around and gradually some things was added to it but the basic letter uh, was mine Even, matter of fact uh, I saw a book the other day no this is not this book here uh, was was added to the original. Okay. And there's no copyright in it. Because they didn't know who wrote it. Right. Okay? Right. And so very little has been added to this one. But some others have gotten thicker. These are other people adding to it and so forth. Okay? But the original itself, you know, was just uh, uh, two long sheets like that, front and back. Right. But that's, 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 <laughs> that's how the letter came. Because anybody could have, but mo nobody really was, apparently was doing that very much reading because we, we won't teach it in school, no way. And so, but I, teaching it in school, no way. 
And so, but I thought more people read than me. And so that's how I, I began to learn the stuff. I was not even a history major, matter of fact. I was, I was a psychology major. And I was an athlete. I was, I was, I was a track guy. And, uh, and, and, uh, and I was a Vietnam veteran. I had changed a lot after coming back from Vietnam, though. After I really had. But uh, that's, 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 I was, I was a very angry young man. And I took it out and used an instrument to carry out my destructive power and anger toward white supremacy in that letter. That's why I wrote it. But it didn't do anything. I found later found out it did a lot. But what it did was create black studies. And and uh, and, and and but it didn't cause people to ride and do all those kind of things because we weren't ready yet. And because that led, that became that became uh, the uh, foundation for my best-selling book, and that's the cycle technology of brainwashing, crucifying with it. That was the, that was the foundation for this book, and this book was written here 15 years ago. But because I produced it myself, it didn't get a whole lot of publicity. But if you go online. You will see a lot of stuff related to it, but, and I'm starting to do a lot of interviews now. Mm -hmm. But that's the found that two-page thing led to that. But now to get to this, mm -hmm. it took you had to have a background in in uh, psychology, deep psychology, not just regular psychology. And and I studied. It. I'm probably, I believe. I may be the only black person, an African person, in the United States who knows how to do it and how to get rid of it. There is one person who came close in Africa. His name is uh, Y. O. Thank you. And that's it. Now, they are, they are, with all the white people here, there are very few white people know how to do it. It's a specialized area. And I don't care how smart we are and all that and how many needs you have, uh, brilliant people we have. You cannot do unless you have the training, you can't stumble by accident to figure out how to do this. You have to literally be taught the process of doing it. And so, I, so it's been 521 years and nobody has stumbled how to do it. Some people thought, for example, you start studying black history, you can do it. But you can be very, very brainwashed and be an expert in African history. That has nothing to do with reversing the psychological process Right. Uh, mental side of brainwashing. Right. Right. So, as, as far as you being able to teach this um, to other people so that we can systematically mm -hmm. go out to reverse right. the effects of the Willie Lynch letters which you created, mm -hmm. um, you know, how long do you think that process would actually take? Oh, I can tell you, I have actually done, I've talked 2,000, almost 2,000 people. And I've done it for the last 29 years at, uh, at a major university. I won't call the name of it. And I had on average, uh, let me see, I had on average uh, 29 people in a group who would meet for two hours once a week, uh, usually on Wednesday. And this book became the training man of how to do that. And they would practice it and so forth. And let's say, for example, if they were, the first two groups I did, uh, the grade point average jump a whole two letter grade. And, but the females did not at all. They did the same thing the males did, but they didn't get the same results. And I could not figure that out to save my life. I even went to some white psychologists to try to help me figure out they couldn't help me. And I finally discovered what I had done wrong. I began to treat females like stereotype girls. Mm. I should not have done that. So I start treating them as all potential warriors. Anything I needed, whatever, I call on a girl as quick as a boy. The third time I got the same results from the girls and the boys. I've been I was doing that ever since. 